Well, Linda wanted me to um, explain how I got started in geodesy, and there's a one-word answer, and that's CSAT. I was a graduate student back in, in, at that time when it was launched. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about CSAT. Do we still need WinSAR? Where are the US INSAR satellites and a little history of WinSAR? Well, CSAT was launched in 1978. Byron Tapley talked a lot about it. And it had two really re revolutionary instruments on it. One, a radar altimeter. That's really what I've been doing for years. And the second one was a synthetic aperture radar. Here's a, a gravity field made by Bill Haxby down in 1987. And that was a real revolution in marine geophysics. That was an extraordinary event. We still don't understand all these things. We have better views. This is another thing that's very important and extraordinary. This is the first published inter interferogram by Gabriel Goldstein and Zebker back in 1989. And when this was published, I think there were only three people in the world that understood what we were looking at here. I really, I really believe that. None of us did. Then the, uh, we, we started WinSAR, and we started getting ERS data from, from ESA. And this is a, a really spectacular interferogram that we've all seen of the Hector Mine earthquake optimal conditions, and now we've moved a little bit beyond there. WinSAR, of course, has these objectives to try to get INSAR data to our community and um, promote open access. I think we've done an okay job. Um, we're, we still need it, though, because um, here's, a, here's a license agreement for Cosmos SkyMed, and it says we can only use, publish our data at 1,024 by 1,024 pixels. That's not very good. I mean, it's not going to get you a nice publication in JGR. Here's a Cosmos SkyMed interferogram of Kilauea volcano. It looks really nice here. You see a beautiful spot there that's probably due to something happening in the caldera. But now I'm going to dumb it down to 1,024 by 1,024 <laughs> pixels. And look at this. It, it's changing the whole character of this interferogram. You can't see that. And then there's a new kind of interpretation coming out here in the lobate structure, but not only that, there's a lobate structure here where it's com completely decorrelated. And I don't understand how this happens. I mean, this, if, if one of my students showed me that, I, I wouldn't believe it. So um, there's a problem, there's a problem here. And, but this passes the copyright agreement, so we could publish something like this. <laughs> okay, where are the US sat SAR satellites? And this is sort of a sad part of the story. Um, they're in orbit around the Earth right now, and there's lots of them. And um, I'll show you a little bit of evidence that um, there's at least eight or maybe 10 out there. Um, but first, I'll talk about the foreign star satellites. They're the star, stars of our scientific world. Um, we've had ERS-1 and 2, RadarSat, NVSat, um, TerraSAR-X. These are the really good scientific ones. These are not so good because it's hard to get the data. They're commercial satellites. Um, and then in, soon we're going to have two new satellites, Sentinel-1 and ALOS-2. We heard about all that today. So these are coming soon for science. We're, we're going to really move ahead with our foreign INSAR satellites. But here's, here's the sad part of the story. This is launch number eight of US SAR satellites. You can find this stuff on the web. It's called NROL, National Reconnaissance Office number 39. This is a cool sticker. It says, nothing is beyond our reach. And, and so this is part of the fleet of sp uh, space radars. And, um, and, and part of this was Edward Snowden released some budget documents that, that tells us what goes on these. It's pretty hard to hide one of those missile launches. They're pretty bright. And, and you can track what's going around and so on. So the US INSAR satellites, we've had CSAT, SIRA, SIRB, SIRC, SRTM is a wonderful satellite. But then we've had this whole series of NRO we call it a fleet. And right now, the fleet of Topaz is going up. There's one coming up in, um, in March soon. So we'll, if you look to the west, you can see these things going off from Vandenberg. It's really a spectacular thing to watch one of these launches. Um, a little bit about WinSAR. Really, this is the prehistory, the pre-WinSAR. SCEC is really when it got started around 2000. UNAVCO it took it over in 2006. And I've sort of highlighted some of the stars here. Yehuda Brock and, and Dan Weil and Clark Wilson started off Here's, um, here's uh, John McCraney, he's, he's a star of the WinSAR at SCAC. And then here at UNAVCO, um, Chuck and, and Fran and, and Wolfgang were really instrumental in getting the large quantity of data that we have in our archive right now. And it's really important that that happened. So there's really, even today, there's no completely open SAR data. NRO has launched at least nine satellites. There's one more to go soon. 
ESA and JAXA are really the stars of the show. They've really opened this up for us. So thank you.